Okay, so welcome to season 10, and this is our orientation class. Um, today we are going to cover um, some logistics, and then it's orientation because we need to get you used to how we are going to learn effectively using this virtual setup. We've used it over the years, at least for the last five sessions. It's been very effective. And I'm going to show you how you can make the most out of this setup. So the agenda is basically in three sections. I know most of you have seen the brochure, but I want to quickly speak to some of the content in the brochure. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And when we are done with that, we'll go into the content for this season. So we we'll discuss the topics for Microsoft Excel we also discussed the topics for Power BI, um, which I believe are the two uh, modules that all of us are doing. So data analytics with Power BI, and then Excel and data analytics with Excel. So at the end of the day, I'll take your questions, and then I'll also show you how you can enroll in your various classrooms. Um, so this is Finest School Season 10. We thank God this is the 10th edition. We started this way back in 2016. At least we run it twice a year or three times a year, time permitting. And our main goal is to get hands on, okay, improve our skills in Microsoft Excel, which arguably is the most popular business tool in the world, right? Um, it's enough that you know Excel does calculations, but trust me, at the end of the season, you probably have a different view of Microsoft Excel. So normally when you go to offices, people think, ah, this tool that we have been using to do calculations, what's, what's in it? Averagely, the user here is using about 8% of what Excel can do. And I always keep saying that even as trainers, we are still playing catch up. And it's evolving so quickly that we need to get updated, okay, so that as Excel becomes the most preferred tool in all business settings. We can use it for analyzing data, financial modeling, and everything that comes with it. Then we are also, Power BI was introduced in 2017. Okay, it's a powerful addition to the Microsoft family. The idea is that you can data from many sources, chip and transform it, Okay, create your visuals for collaboration. Okay, most organizations to Power BI now for good reason, because it is giving them insights to into their operations. Data is at the heart of everything that we do. A good data culture in your environment or your organization, you wouldn't have to wait till end of month or end of year to know what is going wrong. Wrong in real time, you will see. So Power BI is good. Even for you as a trainer, I'm sorry, as a learner, this is going to be very good for your career switch and progress. Because right now, beyond Excel, you see people throwing in Power BI and SQL and all those things. So it is good for your career as well. Then financial modeling is also one pillar that we do here. We are the only approved training provider for the Financial Modeling Institute in Canada. We've so far trained over 40 financial modelers from Ghana, and we use the body of knowledge to do our trainings. So, so for financial modeling, you are in good company. Even if you are not going to write the exam, for those who are currently learning financial modeling, they can apply it to their work. Okay, so. There are other skill programs we run, but for the public, these are the three main modules that we've been running since 2016. We do app sheets, app development, low code, and we also do Python as well, right? So that is how we are going to be approaching this. I'm breaking, okay. Let me switch this. I understand I'm breaking, so. Let me switch my router.
Okay, please confirm you can hear me. I can hear. I can hear you. Fantastic. Okay. So that is about Finex. And it's a very lively and interactive session for our in-person. It's also very lively and very interactive also for our virtual. Okay. So this is a typical classroom setting here. Now, what is new this season? We are going to be learning Microsoft Excel, but not your usual theoretical approach to learning Excel. We call it Excel for work for a reason, because when you understand the concept, the examples we use are case studies we've gathered over time as we go to corporate organizations to train. So when we go, they tell us their problems, and then it is these problems we've used as examples, okay? in the various topics that you will be learning. So we call it Excel for work, right? We're also going to learn data analytics, okay? So we'll learn how to use Power BI to extract, transform, load, model data, calculate with DAX data analysis expressions, okay? And then use Power Query and Power Pivot and all those tools to eventually get insights for our users or managers. I'll go into that as well. Then we'll learn how to build a three-way integrated financial model for those who are doing the financial modeling. I see their hands popping up. Are there questions or people just join it? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so those are the th three things that will be taken away this season. Why Finex? I mean, whether it's online or in-person, it is not going to be a one-way traffic. I'm not going to be giving a lecture. Um, it's going to be a workshop-styled setting. So you'll be practicing along as we go. I'll show you how. Okay. We are MCTs, Microsoft Certified Trainers. So at least you can be comforted that we are teaching you the right stuff. And we also like the connection part. In the middle of our name is connect. Learn, connect, and grow. Uh, finest thrives on networking and connection. And over the years, it has been one pillar. So we want to know who you are, where you work, so that if there's a way I can connect with you or you can connect with me to help the learning, we do that, okay? It is a mix of students and workers. Uh, we have a very large population at the University of Ghana Business School. We normally invite them to be part of the learning so that even as old men and women, they can help us uh, learn some of these skills. And they also benefit from our, okay. Uh, they say the young men know the rules, but the older men know the exceptions. So if we mix the two, it makes it easier for both of us, okay. And as you will notice, we give you flexible online and in-person schedules. So for those in CAS, those in Sweden, those in the UK, you are still able to join us because of this setup. The content we will create together, and I'm emphasizing this, is available for all of us for life. So unlike um, most online courses where it's one, well, somebody sits in the classroom and records what he or she feels comfortable, this is going to be a very interactive session. So you ask your questions live during the classroom. All these will be recorded, okay? And then we'll serialize them in a Google Classroom you have lifetime access to it. Okay, so anytime you are stuck, you can go back and play that particular topic with all the resources. If you have any questions too, you can post them there and then the facilitators will pick it up. Okay, then we are also, as I said, approved training providers for the Financial Modeling Institute and we are also Microsoft partners as well. So I hope I've given you enough reasons to be comfortable with us. Uh, we'll keep on improving. Okay. So beyond what we do here, that is training people in these skills, we also have other projects that we do. So the first one is Excel Our Girls project. So this we are doing in collaboration with Think Thrice, which is led by Yvonne. Um, so we train girls under 25 in data analytics and low code app development. Okay, we just finished our second edition. 
There's also the UGBS project that our hope is to pass on these skills before the students even get out. We were in school and we didn't get there, so we think it's easier if you go in there and then we let them see light. And for some of the students, honestly, all you need to do is just light the fire and they even come out better than some of us. So that is also a pro bono project that we are doing at the business school. And then this finance school is our third project. So those are the pillars that we have. Now let's go into what we are going to learn this season. So we have categorized this into four broad areas. So in the early weeks, we would help you get comfortable with Excel. Okay. In fact, for most of us, the Excel we know is what people taught us at work. But what we have done as a team is to research into the best way people can learn Excel. And we've seen the results of this over time. So we start off with a blank worksheet where you get to see the overview and the architecture of Excel, where to go to, what are the names of the various features, okay, the various shortcut keys, how the calculation engine works, and all those things. So we cover that in the first two sessions. Then once you are comfortable, we'll move you to formulas and functions. Okay, so there are over 500 functions in Excel and they are still adding on. But in truth, you don't need all of it. About eight or nine should just be fine. So we introduce you to some of these ones. So the arithmetic functions, the logic, dates, text, okay, lookup functions, and then recently the dynamic array functions. All these applied to work scenarios so that you can relate, okay, and then make good use of it. So formulas and functions will be another module, right? Then after you are comfortable with these formulas and functions, we would help you learn how to simulate models or results with Excel. Okay. Then sometimes when you are doing presentations, um, somebody will say, what if inflation was this? What if um, the dollar rate changed to this? What would that be? You don't have to open a new Excel file or a new workbook. You can use tools like Go Seek Data Tables, Scenario Manager, and Solver, okay, to simulate. Okay, so once you're comfortable with the formulas and functions, we'll go to the third pillar, which is how to simulate your models, okay, using these tools. Then the part that I'm excited about, the fourth pillar, is data analytics with Excel. Okay, so we'll put all our learning together and then create a dashboard. So, in fact, every season we come with a dashboard challenge. Okay, so last season we did a personal finance dashboard. But this season, we are looking at an HR dashboard. Of course, we know that we are all not HR people, but it is the learning that we are interested in. Okay, so how do we put together a table, pivot table, power query, power pivot, and all those things to create this interactive HR dashboard? If you take the learning and you're into sales, you can go and build your sales dashboard. If you're into finance, you go and build your finance. If you're into health, take it, use it as a good foundation, and then you go and apply it over there. So for this season, our case study is an HR dashboard. And we are going to be doing that towards the end of our class. So those are the four broad areas that we'll be covering in eight sessions. I'd like to pause here and take questions. And then after we take the questions, I would bring in Ferdinand to walk us through some examples and we would see how this is going to feel in a real classroom. So are there any questions so far? So based on what I've covered so far, are there any questions? I don't have any. Okay, that's good. Okay, so um, Freddy is going to come in now. This has been shared in the classroom. I will come to the classroom part very soon. Um, so it's just an overview of the topics that I have just mentioned. Okay, so 
this is the typical structure for all our workbooks. Okay, so for each workbook, you have a title, and then the subtopics are going to be here. And then we'll list our learning objectives, right? So example, if we take lookup functions, we hope you will learn how to uh, match or look up data using approximate uh, values and all those things. So all the objectives will be here. Now, what we expect from you is that at the end of each session, you will mark yourself, okay? Whether you are dazed, whether it is smooth, or whether you've mastered it. I will explain this in detail, but this is how our typical workbook looks like, okay? So, um, Freddie, are you, are you with me? Hi, Bernard. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, Freddie is just going to tease you okay with some of the topics okay maybe i've mentioned lookup functions you don't understand what this is i've mentioned um, goal seek you don't know what it is okay so for each of these topics we've picked some of the soft examples okay now the way we structure is is that we start you off with the easy examples and then as you get hands on we graduate you all the way to the to the we don't say difficult but the challenging ones okay so Freddie, in the first topic we are going to be learning about tips and tricks to navigate excel like a pro i'm going to go off my screen and then Freddie will share his screen and then demo this for us So Fred, if you are ready, you can share your screen. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, okay, so uh, this is Ferdinand, uh, popularly known as the Excel guy. So uh, welcome to everybody, and uh, I'm glad to meet all of you. So as uh, Bernard rightly said, so we are going to learn uh, various topics for this season 10 and um, we have uh, a set of examples that we want to go through so for those who take uh, the workbook later so this is uh, as Ben has said the structure of our workbook so there is going to be a start page and uh, a toc that's a table of content and um, you have uh, your normal uh, learning maybe some few worksheets and you'll be also be given what some assignments and uh, when you have the assignment then you can send it via the google classroom and uh, for those who like also reading you have you know uh, some notes okay you'll be given some notes and also some videos to support uh, your learning so there'll be link to be shared for the various topic that we are doing uh, Bernard has um, quite some videos on that. So uh, let me quickly go to some of the topics that we are going to treat. So basically, as Bernard said, we are going to learn a lot of uh, some of the shortcuts, okay? And uh, when you learn Excel and you call yourself a guru, these are things that you should, you know, you should know. So typical example here, uh, you have, okay, this data and uh, you want to, you know, apply, uh, how do you call it, a borderline to this. So how do you proceed? So uh, various ways to do that. So first of all, you need to highlight your, okay, your data sets and uh, you just apply, you know, uh, your shortcut. So here goes my shortcuts. Sorry, just a moment. So, all right. So here goes my shortcut just to apply borderline story. So as you can see, I was able to apply, you know, uh, the borderlines to to this, and we'll learn those ones in details. For now, I'm just showing you what you are going to learn in subsequent, you know, uh, weeks. So, example is uh, the salary here. We can also add you know, um, 
format these numbers okay differently as you can see this one doesn't have you know um the commas uh, the thousand separator okay so it's just a raw number here so we can add those things to it so for example i need to add uh, maybe format it uh, this way so using a shortcut of course so as you can see i was able to do that right here and some typical uh, problem that you also face is uh, sometimes you receive data and uh, you have a column called dates and what you see are numbers in that entire column you only see what numbers so sometimes uh you're a bit you know shocked like you don't understand what is going on so some of the people will go and call it that oh it there is a problem with the father i received you know the data not showing i'm um, seeing just numbers so these are typical problem that we face so how do we turn maybe this number into a proper date all right using the shortcut again so if i do my shortcut uh i do this and i get uh, the dates so later we'll learn that you know numbers are uh, sorry date are just numbers and uh, we'll learn how to you know format them uh, appropriately so moving on to um another typical problem that we also face is and i know for those of us who have been entering data especially when it comes to the telephone numbers uh, anytime that you type you start with a zero uh, you can see that the zero will go away so how do we you know uh, make sure that the zero doesn't go away so we'll learn that so let me quickly do that so using the shortcut again so um i'm here so now for this i need to come in uh, you know make sure i format it you know uh, appropriately and uh, when i press okay you can see that i have you know the zero starting with my number okay so somebody can say that oh this is quite simple i can just put an apostrophe there i mean that's what people normally do they put an apostrophe and uh, they type in the zero and the zero stays that's fine but assuming that you have you know uh, 10 000, you know uh numbers already in those cell how do we now come to you know do that so that's exactly what i just showed all right so that'll be you know some of the topics that we are going to learn under these topics okay the tricks that we are going to learn under that so i just want to pause here and take question if any if not i move to the second one okay so Freddie, thank you very much uh, as he said we are going to be going in depth into this so these are some of the topics that we'll be looking at to make you comfortable uh, are there any questions on this i mean i'm not going to be teaching today but just to give you an idea of what is in each topic okay so that you can relate to it okay if there are no questions we'll move on to okay there's a question um maxwell what about uh, please mm -hmm. uh i can see how interesting this thing will be because i'm new uh, <laughs> the, the arrow was going down. but there's one thing i've realized about my excel that i i opened on my i can see on your interface there's a draw mm -hmm. as part of the one that I've written, file home instead draw. But I mean, I don't have that one on my Excel. Yeah, you also don't have the Excel guy. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's, it's part of the topics we will teach you. Um, those okay. are called the command tabs. Okay. Okay. You okay. can edit them, you can move them around, you can even create one called Maxwell and then put okay. your stuff under it. Uh -huh. So, okay. Relax, cry. Okay. 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 Was. Uh, okay. Are there any more questions on this particular part? Okay. Now, in topic two, we'll be looking at how to master cell referencing and create effective formulas. So once you are comfortable with the Excel environment, you now learn how to create formulas. When you do an equal to in Excel, a lot happens. But unfortunately, most of us don't know, so we struggle. And you see people coloring and note those things and um, hard coding. Okay, so 
in topic two, you are going to be looking at how to master cell referencing. The dollar sign that you see people use in their formulas, what do they mean? Okay, if I'm copying down and all those things, what do they mean? So, Fedi, please walk us through topic two. All right, okay, uh, thank you. So, let's take this example that we all know our multiplication table that we learned in class one. So you are given this where you are supposed to multiply you know, uh, these numbers. So for example, if I'm here, I multiply a uh, five to five and I get the results here, that's going to be what, 25. So if I give you this, how are you going to treat it? So this is uh, what I've seen people do, they do it one by one. But uh, when you come to finance, you learn a way to do it you know, faster. So let's quickly do that and uh, later we'll learn it proper. So here I ha just highlight everything and I just do my equal to and uh, when I'm here, I just quickly do this. So when I do this and tada, so this is it and as you can see, here is the multiplication by a uh, five by five, that will give me um, 25. Uh, four by five, that will give me what, a uh, 22, and uh, 20, sorry. So as you can see, uh, I did it within, a, you know, a second. So we'll learn how to, you know, go about that. So there's a lot of stuff that we are going to learn uh, when it comes to cell referencing, very powerful to know, especially when you want to master your Excel. So this be uh, uh, the topic two. So I don't know if there is any question here too. Okay, are there any questions with so? And uh, here, there's a difference between closing at 7 p.m. and 5 p.m. for most people. Okay, doing calculations one by one. We'll leave you behind. Okay, so if you know how to lock yourselves, how to structure the layout, you don't have a problem at all. So topic two, cell referencing, absolute mixed relative cell referencing and creating effective formulas. Are there any questions on this? Understandable. When we start, all the questions will come. Okay, now let's go to topic three. So in topic three, we will learn basic math operations. When you are learning Excel, you've, you appreciate the environment. You know what is the ribbon, you know what is the formula bar, you now know how to create effective formulas. But then you now hit the main road, you start off with some average count, count if, and all those things. But you know some average max main, those basic functions, answer aggregate questions. So example, what is the total salary of everybody? Then you can do some. But in situations where we ask you, what is the total salary of those in account? What is the total salary of those in accounts who joined us in the fourth quarter? How much of this product did we sell last year? Those critical questions, you don't, you have to move up. Some and average and count will not help you. So here we are looking at first the basic aggregating functions and how to do them with criteria. So Freddie, please walk us through what we are expecting in this topic. Okay, Bernard, uh, so here, assuming that we have uh, our typical data here where we have the department and um, I mean, people's name, gender, department and salary. And here we just want to know uh, the total salary for those who are in finance, okay? and maybe for those who are in nature. So how do we create that, uh, that formula that is dynamic enough to you know, pull those um, answers? So here, I've typed here uh, finance. So I want to get the total of those who are in finance. So how do I go about it? So here, I'm going to use um, the formula called sum if. So I have the sum if here. Yes, quickly, and uh, I'm going to add the salary. So just after typing this formula, okay, and I press enter, so, and I guess um, 9,500. So let's quickly check. So this is finance, so this amount that is here, 
and another finance here that is here so when i sum the two that will give me the nine thousand and what is beautiful about this formula is that because i reference it so i can now type here hr okay and uh, when i type here hr i'm able to get you know for those in hr there is only one person in hr so here i get what the four thousand so i can also do same for you know the gender so calculating you know the total number of you know females in three so here i'm going to use another formula a uh, function called countif so counting the female here so when i do that i'm able to get three so we can quickly check so one female two three so we have three females in this data that we have so as i said you can also change this one to male and you also get the count for male so this is something that we are going to learn uh it's very interesting to know that you can dynamically you know switch to one uh department and know the total or maybe counting you know the various um you know whatever that you have okay to quickly get your results done so is there any question on this one too okay so if there are no questions this is basic math operations as i said so here we are going to be learning some ifs average ifs count ifs max ifs min ifs all those criteria combinations date time um, department and all those things right so if you have any questions or any experience you can share but this is going to be topic three right okay let's move on to topic four so topic four anytime we are learning this i create this example um, of a national service person when you go to your organization and your boss prints out something from payroll for you and says we are sharing bonus uh, let me know those who qualify for the bonus okay so use a pencil to take the criteria your boss has given you on paper hard work so if you are using logic functions you can easily use the if and and all combination to determine who should get and who should not get copy down your job is done but there are different scenarios okay so Freddie, please demo the logic functions for us. Uh, okay, so given this uh, example, uh, where we had a COVID and we want to reduce salary, okay, by the percentage given to us. So here, let me quickly do that. So you have a case where you pay 15%, okay, you reduce salary by 15%, if you know the salary is above uh, 4000 so how do we go about it so here the logic function will be most that we are going to use uh, is the if so here we are saying if this one is uh, greater than 4000 okay so what do we need we need to reduce uh, this by so 1 minus uh 15% need to reduce it by 15 percent okay and uh, if not we reduce it by um by 10 percent so and i have this and i get it so for those who are having uh, more than four thousand so they have been reduced by 15 percent of their salary and uh, any other person is you know the reduction is 10 percent so as you can see here 10 percent of uh, three thousand that is 300 minus the three thousand so that will give us exactly uh, this number so there are various examples that we can use okay but this is one typical as bernard has said using a condition to you know get your your figures done so this one typical example so um i don't know if there is any question if not i move to the next one okay so the serious learning will start next week but again for our orientation class which we do before every season you need to be clear about what you've signed up for okay so that when we mention the topics or you see them in our 
brochure is easy for you to relate. The next topic after this is lookup functions. Okay, in Excel, when we say, sorry, in Ghana, when we say somebody knows Excel, most likely the person knows VLOOKUP, true or false. But in Finex, we don't use VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is, in our books, it has expired. Okay, so if you are still using VLOOKUP, then please update. So even though we don't use VLOOKUP, we we'll still teach you how to use VLOOKUP and its cousins, okay? So VLOOKUP has its own weaknesses, we'll show you. Um, why do we even use lookup functions? When we have to compare data sets, when we have a database and we want to call values from one database into the other, okay, we use lookup functions. Now, the examples of lookup functions are VLOOKUP index match, each lookup for a horizontal orientation, and then in recent times, XLOOKUP, which covers all weaknesses, okay? So if you don't have XLOOKUP, um, it's fine. You can still make do with index match, okay? When we get to that topic, we'll show you the strengths and weaknesses of each function. So Freddy, can you demo how a typical lookup function works? Okay, so uh, thank you, Bernard. So here, let's take uh, the first example where we have students records and uh, we want to pull, you know, um, the name using the ID. So this is typically when we go to school, we have that uh, that we are we normally do. All right. So we want to pull the details for this ID. So here I'm going to use uh, the index. Okay. So to retain um, to retain this. So I have this one right here. So given, um, given this ID, okay, when I look at uh, my list, I see that the name that I should get is what Kelvin Denzel. So when I press enter, that's what I want to see. So I can see Kelvin Denzel. So I can also do the same formula, okay, for this one, the gender, the department. So maybe I can quickly um, do that. All right, I can quickly do for the second one by just copying down here and uh, just changing this one to be the gender in pressing enter. And I can see half mil. So I can do exactly same for the department and the, the GPA. So basically that's something that we are going to look to learn and this is just using index and match. So we have, as uh, Bernard mentioned, we have also uh, the VLOOKUP, we have other function, even filter that can also do same. But uh, for now, I'm going to end up uh, at the index and match situation. All right, any question oh. here so far? Okay. I'm sure as we progress, you are seeing your areas, okay, where you'll be applying this. Uh, as I said, the examples you are going to use, at least in the session, we try and use about four or five examples, but we also call for your examples. If you have any similar situation and there's a workaround, we can teach you, okay, you give us that feedback and then we add it to our database. So that will be the lookup functions. As I said, you have multiple options, okay, including X lookup. Okay, so when we are done with the lookup functions, the next thing we are going to learn is the scenarios, right? The managing different scenarios with Excel's, um, no, in fact, topic six is the manipulation and cleaning up of data using text functions. Okay, so if you use any CRM software in your organization, you spool data, you download data, IT gives you sales records and those things. When the data is given you, you have strange characters and all that, you have to take them out. Of course, you can't do that manually if you have a lot of rules. So in this topic, 
we will learn how to clean up data using text functions, how to split, how to merge, how to derive certain strings, okay, how to capitalize, proper case, and all those things that we do to make our data clean. Okay, we are going to cover all of them under this topic. Okay, so we call these text functions. In fact, just this year, they released more text functions to make our work easier. Okay, so we encourage everybody to get the Microsoft 365 version. We would cover that in the logistics part. If we are all on that version, we will show you some how easy these text functions have become. Okay, so Freddy, you can demo this for us. All right. Okay, so uh, thank you, Renard. So as we have here, we have name gender department. Uh, we can use a function to, you know, quickly get uh, this one done. But I want to show you uh, something different, something that people don't really uh, use to also do the same. And uh, during our normal class, we'll do the text function proper. So how do I, okay, separate, you know, these uh, names, gender and uh, department into this in one go? So how do I achieve that? So let me quickly do that. So um, I first highlight, you know, uh, that, and I go to. Okay, so I'm here, and uh, just do this quickly. So separated by commerce, and as you can see, that the data preview, and uh, come here, and I tell where to is the information, which is going to be here. And I just click on this. And what I'm expecting is these various names should come to you know the name column, the gender to also to the gender column and the department. So let me just press OK. And when I do, and voila, so I can easily see that all these one you know are in their various you know columns. All right, so they are no longer together like what we have here because this one is just one column. So we are going to le learn how to use, you know, function, text function to also do same. But I just wanted to show you how to also achieve that using some of the, the tools that we have in the ribbon. All right, so that's also some learning for you. So is there any question on this one? Okay, no questions, um, but I have a question. So I think at this point, it will be good to hear some voices from the audience. Uh, I have a quick question. So far, we've covered, I think, some functions and tools. Which of these tools do you use at the office, at least based on what we've covered so far? I want one or two people to share their experience. So you can you can raise your hand and then share your experience. Which one do you use at the office? Or yes, who do we have here? Yes, yes Kwame. Yes. yes. So usually uh, at my workplace we use the auto sum function, mm -hmm. and then we use uh, the other function that that maintains the average for for the total sum in a year at a constant level mm -hmm. so that's what usually i use i use for 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 my work but the other other ones i i knew it before maybe many years ago when i when i when i used to work in other companies but i've grown i've grown still so i i i've forgotten them but usually with my work because i'm a teacher uh with the pay with the payment slips and all that i do them on next and use the auto sum branch okay so auto sum is your main guy yes fantastic okay any other person which functions do you use at the office just to be sure which functions do you normally use at the office your popular function let me put it that way 
I mean, you'd be shocked to know that mine is index match. I use that a lot of the time. Okay, that's fine. So maybe at the end of the season, you know that these functions exist and then you see how best to take advantage of them. Okay, so after we've covered text functions, we're also going to look at date and time functions, right? So those who do project management, how many days is it going to take this contractor to finish this? HR, somebody has gone on leave. When is he expected to come back? Okay, um, all those calculations, you need dates and then time to calculate. Those who are managing work schedules, okay, you are paying by the hour or uh, using some rates, date and time functions will be useful. So, Freddy, can you demo what is going to be covered under this topic? Okay, so um, as I rightly mentioned, dates are typically uh, numbers, and we also learn how to format them. So now we are going to use a date function to make some calculation here. So assuming that somebody uh, took a leave, okay, so 90, 19 days, okay, and uh, the, the starting date is what, 28th, June 2021. So when is it expected, you know, to, to return? Excluding what? Saturday and Sundays. So the Saturday and Sundays are not part of, you know, the 19 days. So how do we normally calculate that? Okay. Um, typically, people, okay, normally add these two together because, as we said, dates are what are numbers they add these two together but uh, unfortunately that will include you know saturday and sunday so there is a function that you know allow you to you know take out you know the sundays and saturdays or any other holiday if you want so here i'm going to use what we call the workday function so and uh, I have the, so if I had maybe some holidays, I can also, you know, bring those one in. But since I don't have, so I just do this and, and I get a number. So at this point, I'll be shocked if I don't know that, you know, dates are numbers. So here, based on what we learned uh, earlier on, so I can just format this one as a date. And I get, you know, uh, the day the person is supposed to return. So this is typically for those who do uh, project management and all that. So they really deal with dates, uh, a starting date of a, uh, a certain project, and uh, maybe he has to go for two days, excluding maybe a certain date and all that. So you can use some of these functions to quickly know exactly when that project is going to what is going to end. Or uh, even for our uh, HR people, they can also use uh, this to know exactly when somebody is coming back uh, to the office. So typically, these are some of the stuff that we are going to learn. Uh, is there any question here? Okay. No question, understandable. So when we start the real lessons, um, there's going to be a lot of Q and A's. We encourage you to ask questions. Okay, so um, next up. So as I said, there are about 500 functions in Excel and you can group them fairly under how we have done it. Look up logic, text, dates, um, aggregating functions, right? So we'll push them based on these groupings and then we would learn them with case studies. When we are done with all the formula work and functions, we'll move to the simulation zone. Okay, so how do we simulate using uh, one changing variable, multiple changing variables? Okay, so we'll learn all the tools, go seek data table, scenario manager, and solver. Okay, so Freddie will demo a typical situation where go seek will be useful. So, Freddie, over to you. Okay, so uh, here we have this example where we have uh, three courses that we are taking, Excel for Work, Financial Modeling and Analytics. And so far, so good. We've taken our two exams, that is Excel for Work, and uh, we, these are the various scores that we have. So now we have a goal in mind where we want to have an average score of uh, 90. 
Okay, so we just want to guess how much, you know, uh, what should be our score, okay, for the analytics so that we are able to, uh, to reach our target or even go beyond. So typically what people do is to guess, okay, okay, if uh, maybe I get maybe uh, 80, will I get, you know, maybe uh, that average score? No. If I get maybe um, 89, will I get that average score? And no. And they'll be guessing like this for, you know, a certain number of time. And uh, they'll think that the work is stressful. But if you know the right tool to use, okay, you can quickly do that. So let me quickly do that. So I'm going to use something that we call um, Go Seek, as the name goes. So Go Seek. So all right so i have this okay so i get that and uh, so excel is going to perform the calculation for me to let me know uh you know what i'm supposed to get okay he's doing a lot of calculation and uh Okay, good. So Excel is done. So if I'm able to get a 98, I'll get an average score of what? 90. So I could have guessed, 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 and especially if I had a lot of data, okay, to go through, I couldn't guess, you know, accurately. Uh, but Excel will help you using, you know, the tools in Excel to really get, you know, uh, the desired what answer. So typically, this one example that we can come up with. So is there any question on this one? OK, so this is one of the many tools. As I mentioned, there's Go Seek, there's data tables, there's scenario manager, and there's solver. We'll cover all that during this topic. And as we are going through, I'm sure you are thinking of how you can apply this in your work scenario, which is our objective, okay? Then we'll go on to conditional formatting. So as we approach the bottom part, we are getting to the beautiful part of Excel, okay? So beyond the black and white, there are times you see colors, whether we achieved a budget or not, it should be red or green, uh, which value, um, is higher in a set of numbers, okay? You need to visualize it to make it easier for your users. All those can be done with conditional formatting. And here, we have not gone into charting yet, okay? At a very basic level, you can use conditional formatting to do your visualization. So, uh, Freddie, please demo how we use conditional formatting in a typical work scenario. All right. So, uh, giving this example of our student uh, record again, so here we want to highlight, you know, um, students whose GPA is above uh, this, that is 2.6. But the beauty in this is that we want to make this one dynamic. Uh, I know that people, some people use conditional formatting, okay? But uh, what they use sometimes is, uh, is not dynamic enough. So here we want to make it dynamic, say that, if I come here and I put in any figure, okay, it's going to highlight exactly what, you know, I want it to be what highlighted. So how do we now do that? So quickly, let's do that together. So. So we have all these, you know, rules that we can apply. And I know that a lot of people use the one above, but there is this last one here that is really interesting. So, um, and this is exactly what I'm going to use. Okay, so just format it. Um, Maybe any color at all. I can go for orange. Okay, go for orange. And, uh, so, okay, it's. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. I need to, um, let me quickly change it. So higher, higher or equal to that. So I get this. So as you can see here, I'm able to highlight everything that is above uh, 2.6. So if I want uh, things that are above three, I can come here and just type in three. So let me quickly type three here. And I can see that it only highlight those that are above or equal to or to three. So if I come here, I also change it to maybe um, 3.1, uh, right? I only get, you know, these two highlighted. So this one is dynamic enough for you to, you know, specify what, you know, you want to be highlighted. It can be, okay, I want to highlight everything that is male. I want to highlight uh, maybe everything that is uh, maybe HR or finance, whatever, depending on, you know, whatever situation that you have at hand. So this is just one example how to use conditional formatting. So I don't know if there is, there are any question here. Okay, so if there are no questions, then I guess uh, I can share my screen now and then cover the last two topics. So, Freddie, thank you very much. Um, so these are the topics that we are going to learn um, for Excel for Work, and we are going to be concluding analytics with Excel. Um, so when it comes to analyzing data, in the Microsoft space, you can use Microsoft Excel or you can use Power BI. But this first part is the Excel part. So I'm going to share my screen and then walk you through some of the tools that hopefully after building your skills in the formulas and functions, the features and tools that you've just covered, you now be comfortable getting data from any source, okay? And then creating dashboards, okay, like this. Okay, so what you're going to learn is how to use these tools. We call them the tools of trade, okay? So at the beginning of the lesson, you will learn the concept of tables. The advantages of using tables to store data, it allows you to do what we call structured referencing. Okay, we'll cover all that. Then we use a tool called Power Query. All these are in Excel. So Power Query is a tool you use to extract, transform, and load data and manipulate it in any shape that you want. If there are any issues with the data, you use Power Query to clean it. Okay, so that's why you see the shower here. Now, there are situations where you may be analyzing data from multiple tables. Okay, so, you know, when we start analyzing data, we think that it always has to be one big table with everything in there and then you create your analysis. No, it's not even very good in terms of the performance of your workbook. So we'll show you how to um, break data into different sets, okay, called data normalization, okay, so that it is easier for you to analyze data using multiple tables. We create data models with multiple tables using Power Pivot. So Power Pivot is another tool that you use to help you create a data model, okay, based on the relationships among your table. Okay, so we'll cover that as part of the learning. Then we'll learn about pivot tables. I'm sure most of you are comfortable with pivot tables, but in the scheme of things, pivot tables is when everything is done. Okay, when you've cleaned your data, when you've modeled your data, and then you want to summarize and create your report, pivot table is your friend. We'll cover the ins and outs of using pivot tables. And then once we, once we are done, we'll use tools like charts, slices, timelines. Okay, and there are situations where we use cube functions. Okay, and then we create a dashboard. We cover all this. Now, the thing with dashboard is that when you create a dashboard and there are changes in your data source. You don't have to go through the process again. Okay, example, if you just added September's data, 
you just refresh and then your dashboard updates. So I'm showing you this screen because these are the tools that we'll be covering towards the end of our lesson. Okay, so tables, power query, power pivot, the data model, pivot tables, slices, timelines, charts. Okay, and then we'll learn how to create a dynamic dashboard. All these will be covered in the last three sessions. So that is Excel for work. Hopefully, how you came in thinking about Excel is changing now. Okay, it's, it's not a simple tool. It's pregnant with a lot of goodies. And you are going to know all that at the end of this season. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. If there are any questions, that's fine. If not, I'm going to walk us through the logistics quickly. How are we going to learn? How are we going to practice? Okay, so we've now covered most of the topics. So what I'm going to do now is to switch to our classroom. So this is how a typical classroom looks like. Okay, this is the orientation classroom. So nobody's here. In fact, we all joined using this meetup link, right? But I'm going to show you the classroom for season nine, which is what we just finished. Okay, so for those who want to enroll in Excel for Work, we'll send you a particular code. It's called the class code. Okay, it's right here. Right, so this is for season nine. Uh -huh. So those who have committed and registered will send you this code. You come here and then you join this classroom. Now, when you join this classroom, you see these four tabs here. The first one is the streaming tab. So here you can post your questions. You also get notification when we post resources. Okay, so that is the streaming tab. Then when you come to classwork, you will see what we did in season nine. So starting from the very um, first topic, okay, so we had our orientation, we had topic one, okay, topic two, all the way to our last topic, which was analytics with Excel. Okay, so all the resources you need to practice, including playback videos, are available for you. So for those who join season nine, they have lifetime access to this. You can always go back and then play the video. Maybe your internet wasn't good or you went to a wedding, you couldn't join us. You can always come back here and then catch up with what we learned. Okay. Then you can also see your classmates over here. Okay. So your teachers are here. Okay. So all the teachers are here. Freddie and Dorcas will be taking us through the Excel for work. Daniel will also be there to support. Okay, then all your colleagues are also here. Okay, then we'll be monitoring your performance, okay, using your assignments. So we'll be checking your grades and then your assignments as well. Okay, at the end of the day, you get certificates, but it is certificates for those who will finish the course. And here's the thing, everything good in life requires sacrifice. I know there are some expectations. There are some things we want to achieve. Okay, so in the next eight thirty days, at least, if you can commit to this, it will be very fruitful for you. Okay, so we encourage you. I, I know it's not easy. Even if you are learning a new program, there are some challenges that you need to get over, but we would encourage you to not give up. Okay, you've committed time and resources to this, so try as much as possible to finish. Okay, so that is how we are going to be learning. Now, when we post the resource, okay, all you need to do is, when you come to the classwork, you see, example, if it's a workbook, you see it here. Okay, so when you click on this, the thumbnail will be here. Okay, and then you click on the workbook. It would open in a preview mode. Okay, and then you use these three dots to open in a new window. Okay, so when you open in a new window, then you hit the download button. 
and you have the workbook on your desktop to practice. Okay, we'll cover this every time till you get used to it. Okay, and as I said, when we start learning, it's not going to be in a lecture mode. It's going to be hands-on practice. There are times you will be doing the work as your facilitator is guiding you. Okay, now you will be joining with a code. Okay, so sometimes you will get the code posted here. So when you come to topic one, the code to join the classroom will be here. It's important you check this every Friday evening to be sure you are okay. Okay, so when we are done, we take it off and we replace it with a playback video. So anytime you are ready for class, come here, you click on it and then you join the class. All right, that's how we'll be operating. Are you okay with this? Now, when we are live and we are learning, um, you have two options. But here's the option I recommend. You can join with any gadget. So if you have your phone, okay, you can copy the link to your phone and then you connect using your phone or any laptop or any tablet that you are not going to use for practice. And then you have one laptop, your main laptop to practice. Okay, so it is a view and practice setup that you will have. Right, we've used it over time and this is this has been very effective. We don't want you to just come and watch us, okay? But we want you to practice. So the link can be sent to your WhatsApp. If you can copy it from the classroom, post it to your WhatsApp and then connect with your phone so that you see the facilitator demo the concept. You can also practice along. We are not going to leave anybody behind, okay? We'll make sure everybody is at the same pace. And then once we are done, okay, you can go back and take the playback videos. But what is important for us is that you practice as we teach. Okay, so that's how we are going to be doing this. So at the end of this orientation, I'll be sending quotes to you based on what you have registered for. So if you did only Excel for Work, I'll send you Excel for Work quotes to join the Excel for Work classroom. If you did the two, you have two quotes, Excel for Work and Power BI. Okay, and you can now enter the classroom and be on standby for any resource for our subsequent lessons. So at this point, I want to take questions. We've covered the content. We've covered the logistics. If you have anything that you need clarity on, please let us know. And then we'll bring this first part to an end. Are there any questions, please? Okay. Uh, the first is uh, I registered for the Power BI, mm -hmm. but now I want to join the uh, Excel for Work as well. So, uh, what, what will be the time difference for both? Okay. Good question. So, because this is an orientation class, we've we are going to put together Excel and Power BI today. In fact. Um, in the next 15 minutes, we'll cover the Power BI part and then we'll bring this orientation to a close. But the timetable for the class is nine o'clock for Excel for work. Okay, so nine o'clock to 10.30. Okay, so by this time, we would have finished Excel for work. Then we'll allow you 15 minutes for those who are doing Power BI, okay, to stretch, go to the washroom or get something to drink. And then you join at 10.45 for Power BI, okay, using the Power BI link. Okay, so we know not everybody is doing both. So we've done a search that those who are doing only Excel can do it and go. Those who are doing both, you join after a 15-minute break. And then we do Power BI from 10.45 to 12 noon. Okay, which is sometimes you go to 12.15, which is an hour and a half. Okay, depending, we can do maximum two hours, but budgeting 10.45 to 12.30 noon. That is the latest we can go. Eben, are you okay? Okay, Roger, you had your hand up.
Hi, Ruja. Okay, any more questions, please? Okay, Maxwell, go ahead. Yeah, boss. Uh, I just want, wanted to know uh, the resources will be put after the class for any other reading to be done. But for most of us who are working, can we get some notes so that within the week uh, we can be doing some studies? As you go in the Saturdays, the class will be more lively and more easier to grasp, especially for us who are starters. Okay, so that is well noted. Um, when we set up the classroom, what we do is that we we'll load all the topics in advance. Okay, so even before you come to the class, you know what topic we are going to do. Okay. Uh -huh. So when you, you see all the placeholders here, all the way to the end. Uh -huh. okay. So to give you some heads up, you can go and read about the topic before you come to class. Okay. That's uh -huh. okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more? It's an orientation class, so please ask all your questions because when we start the real class, uh, our, our hope is that we've covered everything in logistics and then we are okay. Are we good? Yes, Thompson. Please unmute yourself. Yes, um, Bernard, my question is uh, probably you said it, but I didn't take notice. I want to find out if the um, handouts would be available prior to every um, session. Yes, so as I said, the workbook itself, so every workbook has resources. Um, so we'll put notes here and then links to videos. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, what we give you in terms of resources in the workbook. And this will be uploaded in the classroom after the class. Uh, because when, when, when we load this, honestly, and you don't know the topic, you will not understand. But you can use the topic header as a cue to maybe go and read around before you join the class. But all the resources you need will be embedded in the workbook. Okay, so that later you can do your notes and then reconcile. Noted, thank you. Okay. Roger, I see you're back. Okay, question. Yeah, no, no. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Hello. Okay, what I, I want to change from one model to another model. How do I go about it? You can send me a message after class. We'll, we'll correct okay. that. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, so usually, as I said, when we do the orientation class, the idea is to give you insights, okay? So uh, before you come to class, maybe you had it this way, and then later you want to switch or you want to add on. We are comfortable with that. Okay, any other? Yes, uh, Bernard, uh, uh, something again, please. Please go uh, ahead. The evening session, the 6 p.m. to the 8 p.m. Will you share a different link? Or would you still rely on this very link? Okay, so the evening session will have a different classroom because the evening session will be twice the speed. Uh, we know that Saturdays is once a week, but if you are doing the weekday option, it's twice a week, Mondays and Tuesdays or Wednesdays and Thursdays, depending on the module. So that will be a different classroom. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay, so at this point, those who are not doing Power BI, we've covered what you need for your Excel for work. So if you want to exit, you can exit. But if you want to stay on and then maybe see what Power BI is all about, you can stay. Uh, it wouldn't be long. Um, I just want to use this next phase to talk about Power BI, data analytics with Power BI. And then uh, we'll bring the orientation to a close this morning. So I hope we've covered everything Excel. OK. So at this point, I want to briefly talk about Power BI, which is our second module. 
So, as I said, Power BI was introduced in 2017. Uh, it's gone through a lot of updates and is currently the leader in data analytics when it comes to the various tools on the market. So you have Tableau, okay. Um, you have other tools like SciSense, um, Google Studio is also there. You can use that for data analysis, but I mean, Microsoft is Microsoft very widely used and the last time I did a count there were less than 10 companies using Power BI two years ago but I did an update and I realized most of the companies in fact more than 50 have not seen the need to use Power BI but of course if you are coming from an Excel background Power BI should not be anything new okay it uses the same tools that we mentioned in Excel and add on some features for sharing and collaboration plus extra visuals and more powerful data analysis formulas. Okay, so I mentioned Power Query. I mentioned Power Pivot, right? The data model. This, this is the heart of data analytics. Okay, these tools are available in Power BI as well. So normally for those who are coming from Excel for work, it's not very difficult for you to transition. Now, the challenge we've given ourselves is that the HR dashboard we are going to build in Excel, we are going to create the same version, an improved version in Power BI. So what you are looking at is the Power BI version. Okay, so over here, we have an organization view and then we have an individual view okay so again take the lessons take the concepts and then you can go and apply it to your own sales or finance or health area okay so power bi has three uh, versions let me put it that way there's a desktop version which you are going to use there's the service version, which is online. So typically when you go to an environment, a corporate environment, and they have a license, you'll be using the desktop version and the online version for sharing and collaboration, right? So, and then there's the app part where you can develop reports for the sales team so that on the go, they can be checking their actual versus their targets and all that. So we'll learn how to get data from multiple sources. Okay, so in fact, the advantage of Power BI is that it has a long list of common data sources and connectors. So if you talk to your IT guy, he can help you connect to your CRM or your native software or your SQL server. Okay, so that's the reports that you are working with coming live will show you how to extract, transform, and then load the data using Power Query in Power BI, okay? And you also learn how to connect using the data model to multiple tables, okay? Then you will learn the concept of DAX. So DAX is the native language in Power BI, data analysis expressions. We use that for calculations. In fact, it's not everything Power BI does that Excel can do, and vice versa, okay? So they are complementary, if you like. Okay, so for somebody who really wants to get hands-on into data analytics, it's a, you are encouraged to have a good grasp in both worlds, okay? Because you never know what the organization is using. If you are comfortable with Excel, use Excel for this, but it will be good to also know that Power BI has some extra features and tools and functions. So we'll cover data analysis expressions. We'll learn how to use calculate, filter, declare variables, and all those things, okay, to create powerful formulas. And then we'll cover all the tips and tricks you need to know about visualization. It's very interesting how we build dashboards in Power BI. It's very easy. Okay, so we'll show you 
how to easily get this done without struggling okay so we cover the visualization part then you also learn the transformation and modeling part and then you learn how to calculate with ducks and then you visualize so that is how we are going to approach the power bi area and as i said it is one tool that is quickly evolving in fact i was surprised to know that the number of students who are already learning power bi has almost quadrupled okay in our business school because the organizations are now looking for this scale right now in terms of setup you don't need much we'll show you how to download the desktop version so what i have here is a desktop version okay you can easily download that using um, an online okay so you can go online and then download the desktop version it's free okay so here no license is required okay um, in fact if you master the desktop version and then you get into an organization is the learning curve is not really steep so you just have to add how to manage this in the online service space and you'll be fine but for almost 80 percent of power bi users we all start off with a desktop version which has all the tools we need and it works just fine you don't even need to sign in so as our first topic we are going to learn how to download this bring in our data and then start the analysis right so that is how we are going to do this and then we take it step by step so we are able to build this final dashboard which is an upgraded version of this excel dashboard so if you are doing both you are in good company you are killing two birds with one stone you will learn how to build this in excel and you learn how to build this in power bi then at least when people gather and they are talking about data analytics around the table you can also contribute that is the whole idea right so as i said for those who are doing power bi this is what you'll be doing it's great it's going to be very hands-on okay um in our earlier class we did a sales dashboard okay so data analytics excel for work yeah so analytics with power bi this is what we did last season okay so we will be sharing all these resources with you okay the DAX reference guide and all those things it's very easy so don't be intimidated by all the complex terms that you are seeing it's going to be very very easy so come along and then gain the skill so that at least you never know what opportunity would come you can embrace it okay so i will end this power bi intro and then take questions any questions on the power bi part So those who joined up for Power BI, don't worry at all. It's going to be a very smooth ride, okay? It's a good skill to have in your pocket uh, because if you go online right now... I just uh, heard about it. I heard about it last year, 2021. Okay. And then this year, everywhere you go, especially in Sweden, everyone is asking about Power BI if you know it, how to use it. So it's like widely used now in Sweden. They use it more than Excel now. I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised. I mean, so as I said, it's, it's in its first five years. And the thing with mastering the tool in these early days is that you become a master when others are now joining. OK. Uh, two years ago, we are not even mentioning Power BI. But now, go online, LinkedIn, all the remote jobs, if you don't get Excel, you get Power BI. But the last time I looked at a certain trend, and it appears in terms of even user population, Power BI is gradually overtaking Excel, right? So as I said, from what I know and from what I see, they are complementary tools, OK? There are 1,001 things Excel can do, Power BI cannot do, vice versa, right? But to be valuable, it will be good to go to the table with these two skills. Okay, so that's either way you don't lose. If you don't join now, we don't join this campaign now, 
the next five years it will probably be more complicated to join because every month they release a new feature and in fact most of the books that were released in 2018 uh, are already expired so when you get in now and you appreciate the concept when you watch a video on youtube you can easily know oh this is the part that they just added on this part so it's fine that will be easier than having this call in the next five years so that is why i think everybody should embrace it now if you want to take the exam they have a global certification okay so it's the pl300 um, we are going to use the so this is the pl300 okay so you get the microsoft power bi data analyst certification mm -hmm. so whether you are in sweden you are in the uk or you are in the us this is something you can show everybody believes that you've done this what we are going to do is what you what we cover in this module is going to give you a very good foundation okay to write this exam okay when you need exam resources we'll give them to you it's um i think a three hour exam uh, multiple choice okay so you can sit for the exam and then um, get the certification okay so that is about the power bi are there any questions we start that class to next week god willing any questions fantastic so i would conclude with the other pages of our brochure so this is analytics with power bi at least now you can relate okay so we cover all these topics in the period with all the resources that you need learning that you will learn uh, we are not here to um, just stroll in the park. Um, in Findex, we learn because what we hope to create are good evangelists who go out there and then put in a word for us. So we'll put in a lot of the resources. Those asking for resources, you'll be overwhelmed. So get ready. Okay. So financial modeling. Um, if you are here, I assume you are not doing financial modeling because the financial modeling this season is in person and there's a reason it is it includes a workshop okay so the workshop is to let us see that you are practicing right uh, it's very hands-on and when we come on saturday mornings we learn and then we practice so that is what they are doing currently but the way we've done it if you want to do financial modeling you can do excel for work and power bi either on a saturday or on a weekday so either way you don't lose out so for those who want to do financial modeling you can still come join the financial modeling class in person and then by 12 you are done with your learning and your workshop you take a snack break and then you do excel for work at 1 pm and power bi at 3 pm in person or otherwise you can do these options during the weekday but i just want to walk you through the financial modeling we use the Financial Modeling Institute's body of knowledge, okay? So if you know the FMI is a global body, okay, that's is giving certificates out or certifying financial modelers all over the world. Okay, we are proud to be their approved training provider in Ghana. So here you can take the exam after you've gone through our training so they have the advanced financial modeler program they have the charter financial modeler program and they just launched the master financial modeler program okay so that is what you are going to get so if you want to join us this is in person for a reason because we want to we want to see you practice for the exam which is under four hours okay so um if you come, you'll be doing a lot of hands-on practice because it's speed work. And even if you don't write the exam, the learning that you you get, uh, so here is yours truly. Um, on the page, I was wanted to show you 
Nescale's hub here. But we are here. So bottom line, this is Financial Modeling Institute, and we use their body of knowledge. So you learn how to link your accounting knowledge. If you don't know accounting, don't worry. We'll take it from Accounting 101 and then help you appreciate how the statements work, okay? So that you learn how to connect the income statement to the balance sheet, to the cash flow, to create evaluation for a project, okay? So you go through all the best practices. You learn how to build interactive timelines, interact um, effective assumptions, okay? And then create scenarios. And then you learn how to build schedules for your financial model. And then you finally create a three-way financial model. So this is for those who want to do financial modeling. This is your program. And this is how you are going to be approaching this. Are there any questions on this? Okay, please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for this. Uh, but for the financial modeling, mm -hmm. uh, those who are far, far, far away from Accra and still want to do it. Okay. Uh, so, what is the end uh, for us? So, you know, I made a special arrangement for you. Uh, okay. So what we've done for those who are far, far away from Accra and who want to join is we took some time to record all the modules, okay, in one classroom. We call it season five. Okay. So um, for those who want to sign up, I'll give you access to that classroom. In fact, okay. most of the people who have passed the exam even did it without stepping here. BC is an example. Okay, so okay. BC has passed the exam, but he's in the U she's in the UK. Okay, so you can use that, and I would encourage a little uh, discipline and commitment. Okay, so you yeah. can use that. Uh, the one who recorded the video took his time to go through all the topics, okay. accounting 101, all the way to the end. So, Max, see me, and then I will give you access to that classroom. Okay. Thank you, boss. Okay, boss. Welcome. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so that is financial modeling. So we've covered Power BI, we've covered Excel, and this is financial modeling. Now let's go to the other part. So as you know, um, this is the subscription plan. So each module is 1,000 CDs. Um, we give you some discounts as well. For all three, you say 500, you pay 2,500 instead of 3,000. Okay, those who made payments before today, uh, you can see us for a 10% discount if you haven't taken it already. But after today, you are paying everything in full. Now, this is the thing. These prices have been the same since 2016. Okay, if you've joined Finex for a while, even amidst the inflation and the FX changes, uh, we are interested in people. Okay, but this is your commitment to help us grow. So as for discounts there, we've discounted it per, okay, so the 1,000 CDs for the last five years, you can imagine, we are still sticking to it. So that is the commitment. So if you have not committed yet, you can make payment, send me the receipts, and then we'll go on to the next steps. If you have any special challenges, do let me know. And so the mode of delivery, as I said already, we've taken our time to make sure the learning is available for everybody. So those who are outside Ghana, those who are um, always on the go, you have options to join us. There are those who have joined us and relied on the playback videos to even pass the exam. We understand the challenges, but we would encourage you to join the live sessions if you can. Because you see, when you join the live sessions and you ask questions, you contribute to the learning, right? It helps, right? But if you can't, then you have to rely on the playback videos. But please, as much as possible, join the live sessions. Don't just say that because they are playback videos, I'll come and then watch the playback videos. It really is not as effective as joining the live sessions. Okay, so this is our timetable. And here, let me take some time to break it down. So broadly, there's virtual and in-person. 
and then there's weekdays and weekends. So if you are joining us on weekends, the virtual session is what we are having right now. Nine o'clock to 10.30 for virtual, Excel for work, 10.45 to 12 noon, analytics with Power BI. While we are doing this, the financial modeling in-person class is going on. They will have their learning from 9 a.m. to 10.30. Then they will break into their workshop session the time we are doing Power BI here. Okay, then those who are doing financial modeling and want to do Excel for work and Power BI, they will continue after some break, okay, and then finish the day with Excel for work and Power BI in person. So for the virtual on Saturdays, by 12, we are done. That's how it works. Then the weekdays, in person. So if you are joining us in person, there's on Mondays and Tuesdays, Power BI is online, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then Excel for Work is in person. So you come here, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then we turn it around for Wednesday and Thursday. Excel for Work online, and then analytics with Power BI in person. So we've taken our time to build this so that it answers all the questions that you will need. So, or it gives you all the answers that you will need, I must say. Right, so this is our timetable. Everybody can find something in here. Please, are there any questions on this? Great. Okay, so let me introduce, yes. Um, for the weekdays, how many how many um, weeks will it be? Because I see Excel for work comes four times a week. So how many how many weeks? Okay, so for the weekdays, they run twice a week. So you know, for the Saturdays, we'll be doing once a week, but they will be meeting twice a week. So. If you are joining us for the weekday option, you will finish faster. You will finish before the Saturday people. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so weekday online or in person, you are meeting twice a week. So you finish your course faster than the Saturdays. They are doing once a week, so eight sessions. And then you will do four weeks, twice a week. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, so as we conclude, I'd like to introduce the team behind Finest Skills Hub. You know me already, so this is Bernard. Yeah, um, I'm still trying to get big. So I'm not as big as you see me in my videos. So then there's Osbert. Osbert is uh, in charge of operations and logistics, very reliable making sure everything that I've talked about is in place, in person, online. So you meet Osbert when you come in person. Then there's Priscilla. So Priscilla is into data analytics, data science, AI, and machine learning. So you'll be seeing Priscilla in the data analytics class. And then this is the Excel guy. So Freddy is the one you heard this morning. So Freddy, We'll be handling Excel for work with Na and Daniel. Okay, so Na is here. You heard her voice, but if you come in person, you meet her. And then Daniel is also here with Excel for work and then AppSheets as well. Then we have Ernest. So Ernest is handling the financial modeling class. And then we have Dewinga also handling the financial modeling class with Ernest. Okay, so this is the fantastic team of eight. Um, so you have options. So if Bernard is not here, if Freddie is not here, you are in good hands. We've done a search that at the end of the day, um, you come to find next and take something away. Okay, so that is the team. Options to pay. Please, I would encourage everybody to register. It helps us with your data. Okay, so when you're issuing certificates or we are sending receipts and all those things, it makes it easier. So please go to our website, finestclosehub.com, apply if you have not. 
so that we can easily send you your receipt and any other related information so far as this training is concerned so this is our website when you go apply now is staring at you okay you go and then you fill the form for us so that we can have your details okay so class has started today these are options so you can pay via momo you can um, use bank gt bank is legon branch and then you can send us a receipt when you are done okay if you haven't received your receipt to let me know daniel has been sending some receipts okay so thank you very much um we appreciate the decision to join us for this 10th edition and hopefully you'll be part of a community that is growing adding value to students and workers alike so maxwell question uh, yes, well, uh, it's, it's not just it's not a question but uh, for those of us who want to promote the finest skills uh, brand uh, uh, when is our t-shirt coming <laughs> <laughs> no worries when you come i'll give you one we have some here okay okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay so but you can share our website and then you know, okay uh, okay I'll, yeah. I'll do that Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Okay. So, people, it's been amazing having you. Um, and we are looking forward to a good season. As I said, it's always been a good season. But please, please, commit to it. Commit to it. Latest, by end of October, we are done. Worst case will be first week in November or second week in November. We are done. Then you have good appreciation, a good foundation. So that when you watch YouTube videos, it makes sense. Or when you see somebody demo something online, it makes sense. Then you can now build on that scale and then grab all those opportunities that are coming ahead of time. Okay, so um, as I said, I'll be sending the code to you. So the code is pretty simple. When I send it to you, you go to classroom.google.com, okay? Then in the top right corner, you see plus. Okay, so you hit this plus sign, join class, and then you put in the code, and then you are in. Uh, that is, if you are signed in with your Gmail, it should be easy, right? Uh, so if you are signing up for two, you get two codes. So you have Excel and Power BI. Okay, then you are live. Then you can come every Friday evening or whatever day you've signed up for and assess your resources and join us live. So as I said, when you come, you see the link to join the classroom under the topic. You click on it and then you are live as you are this morning. So thank you very much. If there are no questions, we appreciate your time. And then hopefully we'll link up next week, Saturday, for those who are doing the Saturday option. And then Monday for those who are doing the weekday option. So thank you. Thank you also. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you.